In this video today, we are going to learn how to perform the Fugelmeier assessment of upper extremity in stroke or any neurologically weak patients. This assessment is going to be highly useful in planning treatment of such patients. We are going to dive deep in each step, so watch till the end. Let's get started. In the first step of section A, we are going to assess the deep tendon reflexes of biceps and triceps. We are going to check it on both sides and compare. On the affected side, if the reflexes can be elicited, then we can give score of two, otherwise zero. In the next step, we are going to check for the flexor synergy. So we are going to ask the patient to perform same side knee to opposite side ear. First on the unaffected side, and then on the affected side. Keeping the thumb facing up, the movement is like answering a phone call. If the patient can achieve full range, the score of two is noted. If the range of motion is not complete, then score of one can be given. And if the movement is difficult to initiate, then zero is noted on the scale. Next, we are going to check for the extensor synergy. This time movement is performed from same side ear to the opposite side knee, just like keeping the phone down, and the same sequence of scoring is followed. In the same way, next movement we are going to check is hand from lap to lumbar spine. We are going to check on both sides, and if the patient can perform it, we give a score of two. If the hand is unable to cross the iliac crest, then one, and if the hand cannot initiate or not crossing the ASIS, then zero. In the third part, first we are going to check for the shoulder flexion from zero to 90 degrees, strictly with elbow straight and forearm in mid prone. Performing on the affected side if the movement is achieved without compensation, score of two is given. If the elbow bends and movement isn't completed, score of one is given. And if no movement is possible or immediate elbow flexion is seen, zero is noted. Next, the pronation to supination movement is performed with elbow in 90 degrees. Support at the elbow can be given, but not at the wrist. If movement is achieved fully, the score of two is given. And if the range is limited, the score of one is given. Zero is given if the starting position is also not possible. In the fourth part, first we are going to check for the shoulder abduction movement from zero to 90 degrees, strictly elbow straight and forearm pronated. A score of two is given if the movement is achieved without any compensation. One is given if there is elbow flexion noted during abduction and gives zero if the movement isn't possible. Next is the shoulder flexion from 90 to 180 degrees with elbow straight and forearm mid prone. Score of two is given if the movement is achieved without any compensation. One is given if there is elbow flexion seen during the movement, and zero is given if the starting position isn't maintained. Next is the pronation supination movement with shoulder maintained at 20 to 30 degrees of flexion. Support can be provided from elbow, but not at the wrist. Score of two is given if pronation supination is achieved. One is given if the range is limited and zero if the starting position or movement isn't possible. Now only if the score of six is achieved in the above fourth section, this reflex testing will be done and compared with the normal side. In this, we are again going to check for the biceps, triceps, and palmar reflexes and score accordingly. This completes your section A in the assessment and a total score can be written at last once completed. In section B, the first step is to assess the stability at wrist. With the elbow at 90 degrees, wrist extension at 15 degrees is performed and held. If the patient can perform it but cannot hold against resistance, then the score of one is given. And if wrist can hold 15 degrees with resistance, score of two is given. 
Zero is given if the movement is not possible. In the next task, patient is asked to repeatedly perform wrist extension movement in the same positioning. If the movement is achieved smoothly, score of two is given. If the range of motion is limited, score of one is given, and if the movement isn't possible, zero can be given. The next task is also similar, but this time the elbow is maintained straight. The wrist is maintained at 15 degrees extension. If the patient can maintain the starting position but cannot hold against resistance, score of 1 is given. If the movement is maintained against resistance, score of 2 can be given. Next is the repeated wrist extension movement with elbow straight and slight shoulder flexion. Support may be provided at elbow but not at the wrist. If the patient can perform repeated wrist extension, score of two can be given. If the range is incomplete, one can be given. And if no movement is possible, zero is marked. Then the last one from section B is the wrist circumduction. With elbow maintained at 90 degree flexion, wrist circumduction is performed. If the patient cannot perform it with full range of motion, score of one is given. If the movement is achieved smoothly, score of two is given. And if no movement is possible, zero is marked. Next in the section C, first we are going to check for the mass finger flexion on the affected side from fully extended position. If the patient cannot achieve full range, score of one is given. And if the full movement is achieved, score of two is given. If no movement is possible, zero is marked. Similarly, next the full extension movement is noted. If the range of motion is half while opening the hand, score of one is given. If the full finger extension is possible, score of two is given. If no movement is initiated, zero is marked. Next, we are going to check for the grasp. First is the hook grasp. The patient is asked to make a claw hand. If the movement cannot be performed, zero is given. If the position is achieved but cannot hold against slight resistance, score of one is given. If the position is maintained against resistance, score of two is marked. Next, we are going to assess the thumb adduction. For this, a paper has to be held between the thumb and the first metacarpophalangeal web space against the therapist's resistance. If the task is achieved even with resistance, score of two is given. If the position is maintained but cannot hold against resistance, score of one is given. And if the paper cannot be held, zero is marked. Next is the assessment of pincer grip. Patient has to hold a medium thickness pen between the thumb and index finger pads against resistance. If the patient is able to hold against resistance, score of two is given. If the position is maintained but not against resistance, score of one is given. And if the pen cannot be held, Zero is marked. Next is the cylindrical grasp. A cylindrical shaped cup or object can be held by the patient against resistance. If the patient can hold it against resistance, score of two is given. If the patient can hold the object but not against resistance, one is given. And if the object cannot be held, zero is marked. Similar assessment for the spherical grasp is performed next. Score of two if the ball is held against resistance. One if cannot tolerate resistance. And zero if cannot hold the ball. Next section is the testing for coordination and speed. The patient is explained the testing on the normal side first. 
eyes closed and repeated movement of finger from knee to nose is done five times as fast as possible with a timer on stopwatch. The movement is then assessed on the affected side. If the patient completes the task without compensation and within time, the score of two is given. In this test, we have to assess for the tremors. If there's tremor seen while doing the movement and at least one repetition is completed, score of one can be given. And if not, then zero. Next in this test, we have to check for the dysmetria. If you see that the movement is jerky and slight and accurate, score of one can be given. But if the movement is jerky and largely inaccurate, zero is marked. Next in the same test, timing is also marked. If the test is completed in two to five seconds, one can be given. And if more than six seconds, zero is marked. Then a total score of section D is noted at last out of six. Next, we are going for the sensory assessment. First, we are going to check the light touch with a small brush or a cotton piece. The patient is explained on the unaffected side with eyes closed, and he can either speak or show where the stimulus is being applied. Then the same test is performed on the affected side. Different areas from forearm, wrist, shoulder, and palm of the hand can be stimulated. If the patient can locate correctly, score of two is given. But if there is inaccuracy and decreased sensation, score of one is given. If there is nothing felt by the patient, zero is marked. Next in the sensory assessment, we are going to check for the proprioception and joint position sense. With eyes closed, patient's affected side limb is moved in different positions, and patient is asked to replicate is on the normal side. The scores are given as per the performance and accuracy of the patient. Shoulder, elbow, wrist, and fingers, all joints are tested in the same way and scored accordingly in this part. Once done, at last a total score of this assessment is recorded in the form. And the last part is going to be the passive joint range of motion of shoulder, elbow, wrist, thumb, and fingers on the affected side. While checking for all the movements, scores are given according to the available range of motion. And if there's pain reported during this passive testing, that also has to be recorded. If there's no pain, some pain, or severe pain in the end ranges, it is too recorded. And at last, a total score out of 24 in passive joint range of motion and out of 24 in the joint pain section is recorded. So once completed, you will have scores of all the sections. Write them at last and make total of them out of 66 from section A to D and out of 12, 24, and 24 in the H and J section. This assessment scale has been recorded to have high reliability and validity and can be very useful screening tool for neurological sensory motor assessment. Hope you all like the video. In the next part, we will cover the lower extremity Fugelmeyer assessment in the same way. Thanks for watching.